When it comes time to set up a run on the VS7 real-time PCR instrument, it's important to label each well in the software with the pertinent information, including the fluorescent dyes being used, assay and sample names, standards, and no template controls. The VS7 software provides lots of ways to get this done efficiently. The four videos in this series will cover the most common approaches, including entering setup information manually into the software, using a VS7 software template or .edt file, copying and pasting, and importing from a text or CSV file. In this video, we'll cover the first option, entering information manually. To get started, I'll click Experiment Setup. For this first approach, I'll assume I'm doing a 96 well run, since that's typically where someone would use this strategy. I'll pretend I'm doing a relative standard curve run, and I'm going to leave the remaining default settings as they are, since they don't really affect how the setup works. I'll now go to Define. Here, I'll enter each target and sample name, but to do that, I actually have a couple of choices. If I've never entered a target or sample name in this software previously, I need to click New until I have the correct number of blank spaces, say two genes for this run, then I click in each box until it becomes active, and I type the target name. Next, I want to choose the correct fluorescent dye from the pull-down menu, the appropriate quencher, and I can even change colors here if I want to, though that's not necessary unless you want your amplification curves displayed in different colors later on. Red and blue works fine for me. Oftentimes, I want to use my gene target names again in subsequent runs. I can always choose to enter them manually, but that could get to be a little irritating after a few runs. So instead, I'm going to click on each target name individually, and then Save to Library. As I do so, I get a message each time telling me that the target has been added to the library. That's good. Now, say it's a week later, and I'm ready to do a run using these same genes. Instead of typing the names this time, I can go to Import from Library, choose the target or targets I want to add to this run, and add selected targets. I now repeat the same workflow with my sample names. For the sake of time, I'll leave these labeled as Sample 1 and Sample 2. But if I did have unique names, I could save them to the sample library and import them into new experimental setup files later on. Clearly, the sample library can get pretty busy pretty quickly, especially if your lab uses dozens of unique sample names. You therefore might want to search for names using one of these search criteria. After I choose my reference sample and my normalizer gene down in this box, and don't worry, I can change my selections later on, even after the run is completed, I go to Assign. Here's where I tell the software what's in each well. All of my gene and sample names are over to the left, while my 96 well plate map is over to the right. I'm running a relative standard curve experiment, and therefore I have gene-specific standard or dilution curves on the plate. I'll label these first. Standards are easy to set up thanks to this small button, Define and Set Up Standards. This top pull-down lists both my target and my normalizer. I need to set up the curves individually for each of these. I'll start with the first one, P53. The parameters for the curve are listed here. I'll stick to a five-point curve, pipetted in triplicates. In all likelihood, you'll be running a simple dilution curve, so the starting amount isn't really important for the software to draw your curve correctly, just the dilution factor itself. But if your topmost standard does contain a known absolute quantity, enter that here. Just note that the software doesn't recognize units of measurement, so it's simply going to calculate a quantity value for each unknown at the end of the run. Finally, I enter my dilution factor here. Now, I'm using tenfold dilutions moving across the plate, but some people go the other way, from least to most concentrated. If that's how you do it, choose one of these options instead. You can see exactly where the 15 wells of the curve are going to go. Not everyone is a row person, however, and the VS7 software doesn't discriminate. 
Choose columns if your standards run up and down instead of across. Once everything looks good, hit Apply. You can see behind this window that my wells are labeled correctly. If your standards don't begin in well A1, however, don't hit Apply just yet. I'll show you in a moment how to make adjustments to the plate location. Okay, I'm ready to set up my next gene, beta actin. I choose that target from the pull down menu, and I leave everything else as I set it for P53 since the parameters are exactly the same. Unfortunately, when I go to the plate map, I see this isn't where my standards are located on the actual plate. So I'm going to choose Let Me Select Wells. Here's the slightly tricky part. Using my mouse, I need to select precisely the number of wells corresponding to the parameters listed above. The software knows I should have 5 points in triplicate, or 15 wells, and thus I have to highlight exactly 15, otherwise I get an error. Once I do, I can now apply. I close this window, and there we are, all labeled. Well that's it for the standards. I still need to set up unknown and no template control wells. This part's also simple. I'll first highlight all wells containing P53. I go over to my target list and I click the little white box next to the appropriate gene name. Back over to the right, you can see that P53 has been assigned to all of those wells and that the default designation is as an unknown sample. That's correct, except that I also have three no template control wells. I'll therefore highlight the NTCs, go back to the target list, and change the task pulldown to N for no template control. That sticks a gray box with an N in those three wells. Note that besides U and N, S, which stands for standard, is also a possible designation, meaning I could manually label wells as standards, then enter quantities in this blank. That's all fine, except the way that I showed you earlier is a lot easier. Once I've done the sample procedure for beta actin, my last step is to label sample names. The most efficient way of doing this inside the software is to highlight all wells containing the first sample, and for me that's these triplicate wells, plus these triplicate wells, which I'll select with a control click and drag. Then to go over to my sample list, and click the little white box next to that sample name. The selected wells change color, indicating I've added a sample. Now, if you ever want to confirm that you've added the correct name, just go here to Well Table. And there it is. Always keep one thing in mind. Unless told to do otherwise, the VIA7 real-time instrument records fluorescence data through all filters, meaning the raw data is always there. Users can always go back and make changes to the setup, reanalyze, and the data should be just fine. So never throw out a run just because you entered setup information incorrectly. That's really it for labeling the plate. The next step is to go over to run method and confirm that the PCR conditions are correct. If not, I can easily make adjustments to any of my parameters. Once I'm ready to start the run, I just go to Run, then Save the File. You can see though that there's this other little option for saving the file as a template, and that feature will be the subject of our next video.